While SpaceX is hard at work on their first Block 2 Starship, the Flight 5 Starship has an engine swapped and undergoes another round of testing. Test Article B14.1 returns to the launch site for another round of catch testing, and construction rolls on at the new launch tower and office building. Now let's dig into this week's update. This week's update begins at the office construction site. Workers installing the new facade managed to reach the east side wall overnight. At the build site, new hardware was added on an access platform for the center workstation in Mega Bay 2. Over at the Sanchez site, a pair of cranes were seen picking up the chopstick carriage for the new tower. An auger and crane continued to install new pilings at the launch site as crews worked to shore up the loose soil. At the top of the launch tower, after a few days of being attached to the fifth module, the load spreader was disconnected. Over the next hour, it was moved from the tower and set down on the ground. Multiple tankers arrived at the launch site and began to set up for unloading, but for reasons unknown, they eventually departed without offloading anything. Do you know what they were up to? Let us know what you think in the comments. One of the Booster 15's methane tank sections was staged outside of Mega Bay 1 ahead of stacking. A partially assembled dome, which had several sections cut out of it, was relocated from Star Factory to the scrapyard. These cutouts, called coupons, are made for engineers to analyze. An elevator rail segment was lifted into the fifth module of the new launch tower in the afternoon. On the lower part of the tower, welders began filling in the spaces between modules 2 and 3, making the tower stronger and getting it ready to fill with concrete. With the elevator rail in place now, the Sarens crane began staging for the next lift, placing the load spreading jig over the staging position for module 6. The 6 module was then moved under the load spreader, and workers began attaching it to the module's column. Glazier's work at the office building made good progress, with almost half of the second floor's eastern wall covered by the end of the day. At the launch site, Module 6 of the new tower was hoisted into position. The module was slowly raised up before being rotated and positioned just above the fifth module of the tower. Over the next 40 minutes, workers gently guided the latest module into place, keeping it positioned over the guide plates. Once the module was in place, workers began bolting it onto the module below. With a lighter lift due to the lack of plumbing this high in the new structure, the installation of the sixth module was completed relatively quickly. By early afternoon, the load spreader was ready to be unhooked from the tower. By the time construction workers called an end to the day, glass installation was almost complete on the office's eastern wall. It seems that Starship 30's static fire test was not entirely successful. Outside of Mega Bay 2, Vacuum Raptor Engine 398 was taken off of the ship and moved out of the way, while Vacuum Raptor Engine 384 was brought in to replace it. Engine 398 was then rolled back over to the Raptor's nest. Starship 33's Common Dome was rolled out of Star Factory on Sunday morning, crossing the ring yard before being set down in front of Mega Bay 2. The new version 2 common dome features a large tank sump for added methane storage capacity and stringers over the dome's joint with a barrel. Two large tank venting assemblies are visible on either side of the autogenous pressurization line and these vents help manage pressure inside the liquid oxygen tank. Ship 33's forward section was lifted over and attached to the common dome section before being lifted back up to the corner workstation for welding. Wrapping up work for this level of the tower, another elevator rail section was set down inside the 6th module of the new launch tower. With the 6th level of the tower complete now, the Sarens crane is at its current height limit. Crews began moving the Sarens CC8800 to be laid down and reconfigured. New segments will be needed for the main boom and luffing jib for it to complete the lifts of the final three tower modules. Once in position, the crane's main boom was lowered to the ground ahead of being laid flat for the reconfiguration. Early on Monday, workers began setting up to place concrete for the launch site's new D2 gate. The concrete pump truck started off with maximum extension right off the bat, pumping right over ground level. 
As dawn broke over the launch site, the Sarens crane completed its lay down for reconfiguration, setting down on support stands for the work ahead. A new multi-segment steel utility pole was delivered to the launch site. Concrete placement continued at the D2 gate, with the boom and truck moving around as needed. Work on the Sarens crane began with disconnecting the crane's main boom stay from the boom, using the back mast to lower the main boom stay and relieve the tension. A vaporizer was installed near the launch site's D2 gate as work continues to reconfigure the propellant system to supply propellants to both launch pads. The first section of the new pole was erected near the relatively new restroom building at the launch site. The jury's still out on what this pole will be used for, but it could be a good spot for cameras. The Sarens crane's upper jib stay beam was laid down as disassembly work for the crane's reconfiguration continued. After eight hours of concrete placement, work concluded at the D2 gate and the concrete pump and crews cleaned up to head out. The second section of the new utility pole was lifted into place a bit before noon. A worker then went up the pole to bolt it in place. The worker went up ahead of installation of the third pole section, bringing the top of the pole roughly in line with the top of the chopsticks. The lower jib stay beam was laid down as work continued to reconfigure the Saren's crane. Following Ship 30's apparently unsuccessful static fire, the ship headed out with its replacement engine for another test campaign at the Massey Outpost shortly after midnight on Tuesday, making its way up Highway 4 without delay. After a three-hour journey to the Massey Outpost atop the static fire test stand, Starship 30 was moved into position over the flame trench for its latest cryogenic testing campaign. With the sun rising over the launch complex, disassembly of the Saren's crane picked up where it left off with the lower stay beam's upper segment being removed. The lower section of the lower stay beam was removed from the jib, clearing the way for disconnecting the jib from the main boom while leaving the upper stay beam in place. Another round of concrete placement took place near the under construction launch tower, which wrapped up early in the afternoon. As the clock ticked past midnight into Wednesday, test article B14.1 was brought back to the launch site to test the latest modifications to the chopstick system. B14.1's transport made good time to the launch complex, pulling into the launch site after a one-hour journey down Highway 4. The assembly jig and transport stand for Tower Module 6 was brought out to the launch site, riding a single-width self-propelled modular transporter back to Sanchez. Concrete placement continued at the new office building, this time going up behind the site as the new office project continues to grow in scope. Sun up at the launch site saw a main boom extension attached to the Saren's crane as reassembly began. Once complete, the extended height and reach of the crane will be sufficient to complete the stacking of the last modules of Tower 2. Making use of a telehandler, the booster load spreader was relocated to the launch site to lift B14.1 onto the launch mount. Steel work began to rise between Star Factory and the new office building site, filling in the space between the two buildings with additional workspace. The property dispute behind the area has been resolved and the property will be built upon as well. Crews continued breaking up the foundation of the old vertical tanks with an excavator mounted hydraulic breaker, clearing the way for new hardware. Reassembly of the Saren's crane continued with a second length added to the main boom. With all the boom segments in place now, the jib was lifted and connected to the main boom. The lower jib stay was reattached after that, leaving the jib extension, the pendant lines, and the hoist to be reattached. Steel work progressed quickly in the space between Star Factory and the office building, with multiple beams and three columns in place by the end of the day. Over at the Massey Outpost, a frosty Starship 30 performed a spin prime test before detanking for the day. Sunrise gave a good look at the ongoing construction work. Additional beams and columns installed in the space between Star Factory and the office, and facade work is nearing completion now on the second floor. 
This week at the Cape saw Falcon 9 Booster 1078 lift off on Friday with 23 Starlink satellites for this group's 10-6 mission. Falcon 9 Booster 1069 wrapped up its stay at the dock and was laid onto the horizontal transporter for refurbishment at Roberts Road. Blue Origin continued its testing of the new Glenn's first stage breakover fixture, removing the two-piece yoke from the top of the Pathfinder. A top hat fixture was added to the end of the Pathfinder's new Glenn booster on Saturday, which is used to help rotate the booster to horizontal or vertical. Go Cosmos returned to Port Canaveral on Sunday with two fairing halves after it was chartered to support the launch of Starlink Group 10-6. Signet Warhorse 1 returned to port with the short fall of Gravitas and Falcon 9 Booster 1078 heading straight for the docks to unload the booster. Tropical Storm Debbie made landfall in Florida in the afternoon, bringing heavy rain and wind to the Cape and forcing activity at the Space Coast to come to a halt. As activity at the Space Coast resumed, Bob returned to port with both fairing halves from the CRS NG-21 mission on Tuesday. One of the fairing halves did not survive re-entry and splashdown intact and was brought back to port with its base smashed. Signet Warhorse 3 towed Just Read the Instructions to Sea on Wednesday in support of the Starlink Group 8-3 mission scheduled for launch on Friday. SpaceX support ship Bob joined Just Read the Instructions at Sea a few hours later, also in support of the upcoming Starlink mission. After several days in port, Falcon 9 Booster 1078 was lifted off a short fall of Gravitas and set down on the dockside stand. After a battery of actuator testing of new Glenn's control fins, the composite forward interstage module of the vehicle's first stage headed back to the factory. Go Cosmos headed back out to sea on Thursday in support of the upcoming Starlink Group 10-7 mission scheduled to launch early on Saturday. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.